Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Mythmaster Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I'm doing uh, something I very, very rarely do and, and perhaps I should do more often, is I'm going to do a little self-promotion for a product I had written uh, back in 2020 and um, this was the Mythmaster's screen uh, for 4th edition and um, I wrote this at the time because, uh, you know, I felt that there needed to be a streamlining of some of the rules and, um, and, and just the way that they're presented and to create a Mythmaster screen, which one does not exist otherwise. So, uh, so I created this product and, um, you know, put it up for just 25 cents. And I will put a link in the description below uh, so that you can access it. Um, the reason why I put it at 25 cents was because uh, at the time I, you know, it was I was made aware from Drive Through RPG that uh, free products do not get uh, any kind of recognition for the number of sales that they have, and so you had to do a minimum of 25 cents, and so that's why I put it up there. But uh, recently, I had a uh, a commenter on my uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, on this channel, uh, that said, you know, how easy is Mifrog uh, to learn to play? And so, in response to that, I told them a very brief, um, a brief description of just the one rules mechanic of it. And then, uh, you know, I realized that you know what the best way to um, the best way to explain that answer out a little bit more in detail is to actually feature this product that I already had. So uh, instead of just directing them to my uh, to my uh, sellers page on Drive Through RPG, I figured to do this video, I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to see uh, just two or three pages of an eight-page uh, document. And, uh, and basically do that preview. So um, I'm gonna now switch views here. Now, number one, the one thing that you need in order to uh, run Mifrog, obviously, is the one rule book. This is all that you need to run the game, play the game. Uh, it gives you everything from the rules of the game system to the uh, the lore of the um, of the lands that it is set in, um, and, and you can of course port this game system over into any world setting uh, of your choosing, including your own. And then it gives you the uh, the monster stats and and everything else that you really need. So for fifteen dollars on uh, Amazon, you can get a complete tabletop role-playing game system that is uh, that is really very easy to uh, that is very easy to learn how to play um, despite the fact that I created a um, I created a uh, Mythmaster screen uh, to help streamline some of that but you can see that uh, you know there is a lot here I mean the table of contents of this game system uh, does cover four, um, you know, four to six pages. However, the game rules itself and everything is le uh, about 251 pages. So it is not, you know, like you have to read a, a 350, 400 page rule book in order to learn this system. So now I'm going to move on to what I created for the system to help streamline it even further. So here we have my uh, MythMaster screen. Again, it's on Drive-Thru RPG. I will put a link in there, you know, in the description. Uh, it is only 25 cents, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to read this cover page and just go over the various things that are in the, um, you know, these are templates that you would put in for if you have your own uh, Game Master screen where you can slide in different panels. So that's how this was, uh, you know, created, why this was created. So, it is based on the 3.3 and 4.0 uh, 
uh, system, primarily the 4.0 system. Um, the differences between 3.3 and 4.0 is uh, was just some rules mechanics uh, were tweaked and uh, the lore of the world, which has nothing to do with this product, was also used at the time. Um, now, I want to go to the, the actual table of contents here. <clears throat> so we have a breakdown of the round. You know, so uh, what takes place during the round. Then we have the morale, initiative, combat modifiers that are broken down into pre-combat resolution. Then we go into illuminations, conditions and encumbrance, uh, declared actions, uh, missiles, special actions, movement, maneuvers, stances. Combat resolution, uh, which is in part five, and that is um, OVME, OVMI, and I'm going to go into detail. I'm going to actually show you page five in this. Um, damage modifiers, that will be page six. I will also show that to you as well. And then the rest of the systems, we have healing and recovery, armor, helmets, and shields, melee weapons, missile weapons, range modifiers, material modifiers for arrows and bolts, item quality modifiers, and item modifications. So uh, all of this is contained in these seven pages of charts and such. Now this product will be streamlining your game session with easy to follow charts organized in the sequence of the combat round. The Mythmaster's Screen is a gaming aid for Mythic Fantasy RPG. It is a seven page quick reference of all the charts needed to conduct the combat in its basic form for a game session. Although some of the wording and formatting of the core book charts have been altered for layout purposes, the charts are true to the rules and they're in their basic form. So nothing has been altered from the rules in this booklet. I have had to change the order of some of these things, again, for formatting purposes, and I will show you where I meant by that. So here we have the combat round uh, that you can see here, and the full details can be found in on page 56 here as well. I put references to every page that you might want to look at along right on this uh, right on the screen here so that you can quickly reference if you need to. <clears throat> However, you should be able to just use this chart in order to or series of charts in order to run your game far more smoothly. Now when I when I mentioned having to make some formatting uh, adjustments. So you see that morale check uh, is the first thing that you do in the combat round. However, I couldn't list it first here because there wasn't enough room. So I just switched it up with initiative and put initiative in there instead. So they just supplanted each other again for those purposes. Now let me go to, um, I'm going to go to page five. <clears throat> so this is the combat resolution. Offensive value is OV. For melee, it is OVME. All right. Offensive value for um, missiles is OVMI. And you have here how you determine that, right? So your melee skill proficiency, your encumbrance modifier if carrying a medium or heavy load, your condition modifier if you're fatigued, injured, or soaking wet, your weapon modifier, if any, plus one if carrying a weapon in each hand, so you do get a plus one bonus for dual wielding combat, other melee um, mods, and you're going to see the combat modifications later. Same thing goes for missile weapons, all right, your missile efficiency, your encumbrance modifier, condition modifier, helmet modifier, if wearing a helmet, um, it is harder for archers to uh, be as accurate if they're wearing helmets. Your weapon modifier and other melee mods um, in the combat section. All right. Um, moving on, we have the consequences of combat resolution. And this is one of the unique things 
that is with the Mifrog system that I really, really like. Uh, and I think that anyone playing this system for the first time, uh, you're going to uh, really enjoy this aspect of it. Your to hit is adjusted based on how far from, at, and how far beyond your target number. So let's say you're attacking someone with an AC of 10. All right, so their armor class or their defensive value is a 10 overall. You need a 10 to hit on a d20 roll. Let's say you roll a 10. If you roll the 10, it is equal to the defensive value. You're only going to do half damage. However, let's say you roll an 18. Now, an 18 isn't a critical hit. However, you are 8 points above the defensive value. And so you are going to do plus 6 damage with that hit. All right. Um, now, if you roll a natural 20, once again, against the same against the same uh, person only wearing uh, you know armor defensive value 10 you're going to do plus 10 damage plus any of the other effects that come along with rolling a natural 20 or a critical hit so this system rewards rolling above the target number far beyond just oh well you know, you definitely hit the character. Instead, it's like you not only hit the character, uh, but you hit the character so well that you've actually done additional damage. We go into the defensive value and where it comes from. So everyone starts with a 10. All right. Um, and then their armor and helmet defensive value, if any, is modifying it. Shield modifier, encumbrance modifier, and uh, conditions um, and, and so on affect defensive value. Their size is one half C combat resolution. All right, um, so the size of their defensive value, specifically against missile weapons, will, um, will adjust the to hit factor as well as the damage dealt to it. Uh, armor and helmets and shield modifiers also apply to missile defensive value. So characters have two different types of defensive value. They have defensive value versus melee weapons, and they have defensive value versus missile weapons. Dodging comes into play. Resistance to damage comes into play. Fumbling, all right, comes into play. And so here are the ranges and consequences of fumbling and it tells you um so if you cast a natural one in melee or missile attack you fumble you must cast a d20 and check the result on the fumble table see footnotes three and four in the special attacks and maneuvers under combat modifications see also flaws clumsy all right so on a missile, if you roll a 7 to 20, the consequence is an A. If you roll a 5 to a 6, it is a B. If you roll a 3 or a 4, it's a C. And a 1 or a 2, it is an E. All right. Um, <clears throat> you cannot get a D uh, with a missile weapon. So, so it eliminates attacker hits himself for normal damage. Um, you basically, with a bow and arrow, you really can't hit yourself, um, you know, with, uh, with that. So it, it kind of eliminates that, but with a sling, you can, all right. Uh, with a melee weapon, you can actually, it's, it's higher chance of hitting yourself with a sling, um, and, and basically losing control of that, uh, stone as you're releasing it. And it could actually hit you probably in the back of the head or something like that. Um, but here's the effects. Uh, an A isn't always a miss. A B, the attacker drops his weapon and needs one round to pick it up. A C breaks his weapon and it must be repaired. A D hits himself. 
and E is attacker misses the target and potentially hits someone else. For melee, anyone in 10 feet is at risk. For missile, anyone in 50 feet is at risk. Mythmaster determines who is most likely if more than one at risk. And then finally, F, which is um, attacker hurts himself, takes D4 damage, and checks for cut and shock. All right, um, so this is the consequences, and you have F in both B, C, D. All right, so any of those three categories can also result in F, where they take damage themselves. Now, I am going to show just this one page. This will be the last one that I'm showing. But you have the size modifiers, and this is the, the to hit modifier against them. All right, so a creature that is small is minus two to hit. All right, a creature that is colossal, 1,400 pounds or, or greater, you're at a plus 10 to hit this creature. Because it is just so massive, it's easier to uh, do. You're going to roll 3d6 for cuts. Uh, and there's a, you know, an 8 or um, above an 8 is no effect. All right. And then a down to as low as a minus 1. Because if you have modifiers on this roll, um, you're going to cast a d12. Instant death if the result is greater than the target size. So, um, so you could actually kill something instantly if you roll above its target size. All right, now you're going to be very hard to roll some above something's target size if its target size is a 10 on a d12. I mean, it's possible, but it's going to be very, very hard uh, to do so. And then you have um, the shock you know, uh, potential for causing shock or going into shock. And again, a minus one is instant death for the character. So <clears throat> there are potentials for, there are potentials for um, doing a considerable amount of damage uh, in this game system. And, uh, but with the aid of the Mythmaster screen, I think that it does make the um, it does make the rules, especially the combat rules, uh, a lot more easy to follow. All the other rules, which I will go into further detail with uh, in the future of why you should play this game system, um, all the other rules are associated with uh, with your various skills or, or traits and um, and how those traits influence your skills or influence your uh, actions. Same thing with flaws. How do flaws influence your uh, your skill checks or your actions and such. So, um, and then traits and flaws also influence your interaction with NPCs. Uh, and, and in particular, flaws have a much more greater impact on your interactions with, uh, with NPCs. So, um, you know, the system is, you know, perhaps it, it's crunchier than rules light. However, it is not as, uh, it's not as complicated as other modern games that have, uh, you know, that take, you know, 30, 30, 40, an hour, you know, length of time uh, to create a character. And, um, it certainly doesn't have the action economy that uh, some modern games do have uh, where characters get more than one action or they might have, um, you know, they might have uh, second wind actions or, um, you know, actions incumbent upon what has already, you know, taken place in the scene. So like responsive actions and that kind of thing. So... The system is not as uh, complicated as modern systems, and a lot of the combat modifiers really come into play before the actual combat round, and that's why I broke that out into the chart and saying, you know, pre-combat modifications. So once you know your pre-combat modifications, 
Uh, you could write those out on a, on a card, you know, uh, when you're playing. And, and so, you know, you learn those and you don't need to uh, keep on relooking them up and, 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 and going forward with that. You can go into a combat and already know what those uh, impacts are going to be on your combat. And you're just focusing on, you know, your, your attack rolls and your, uh, and your damage dice. And then quickly looking at the modifier of you know how far beyond my uh, how far beyond my uh, to hit target uh, was I uh, to get any additional damage, and that's up to the mythmaster to let the uh, the player know uh, you're going to add six points to your attack roll. Um, so don't have to tell the um, the mythmaster doesn't have to tell the player. Uh, what the defensive value of the creature is, they can just tell the player how much additional damage their character has just dealt. Uh, and that's, you know, an, um, an important thing to help kind of separate the, the player knowledge from, from the character knowledge as well. The, the Mythmaster can even go a little bit further with that and just you know, describe or well, your hit did a lot more damage than it normally would have done without telling them the number and then just modifying the hit points accordingly as well. So um, it really is a very simple system. It, it takes maybe just, a, you know, a couple extra uh, moments to learn it. And again, I think that this... Uh, you know, I think that the Mythmaster screen, not just because it's my own, you know, creation, but uh, I think it will find it to be very, very useful, uh, which is why I made it uh, so available, um, you know, and at the lowest possible cost I could uh, and still get credit for having uh, people check it out and, and actually purchase it. So um, I hope this, you know, further answers your question. But uh, certainly go back into the, um, you know, into all of the videos that I have done on the Mifrog system, particularly with the ones I was covering with, uh, with the, you know, edition number four and the special edition. I will be uh, digging deeper into this as well and, uh, and talking about any of the changes that really come into play. But, um, you know, again, I hope this... Uh, you know, helped you even further than just my, you know, comment in the comment section uh, of the video. And um, as always, I, uh, I welcome additional comments. Uh, thank you all for stopping in. I hope you found this, uh, this video helpful. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the alert button so you're alerted to when these uh, new things come out, uh, these new videos uh, hit. And, um, as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention table sometime soon. As far as gaming screens are concerned, I am currently working on an homage to the Keep on the Borderlands for Mifrog 4.0. And uh, my, my biggest stumbling block is going to be uh, the map and finding a map. Uh, that is a, uh, you know, not a direct copy of the, uh, the Caves of Chaos, uh, but something that will do very similar that uh, I can either create of my own or um, easily buy the license for using it. And, um, and that will be something that you'll see on my drive through RPG uh, sometime uh, in 2025, I'm going to actually play test this out on my Discord channel, um, you know, with a group of players. So if you haven't joined my Discord and you're interested in playing in my future Mythrog uh, mini campaign of Keep on the Borderlands, uh, you know, join my Discord channel. Tell me in the, you know, in the greeting uh, when you log in there for the first time that you're interested in the Mifrog uh, Keep on the Borderlands, I will create a role, I will assign you that role, and then you can see where it's going, um, yeah, and when it's going to happen, 
and also um, when when the first play tests of the adventure uh, are going to begin. So I am seeking play testers. Uh, jump in on that and uh, and hopefully we can get several groups going uh, and run several different groups through the play test. I anticipate the play test to last about um, three sessions per group. <coughs> and I'm looking to run those sessions for at least six months. So um, I'm looking to run a lot of different players through it and keep on tweaking the adventure uh, going forward until it's something that I'm really satisfied would be a great product to put up on uh, drive through RPG. So uh, thanks again for joining. You all have a great day. Take care.